dear friends let's discuss zymogens today the learning objectives for this are we'll see zymogen definition characteristics proteolytic cleavage examples of zymogens and how the zymogens are activated let's move ahead the zymogens are synthesized as inactive precursors and they are subsequently activated by cleavage of one or few specific bonds these are inactive precursors remember and these inactive precursors are called as zymogens the characteristics are they do not need energy to cleave the bond therefore even the proteins located outside the cells can be activated by this method and we can recognize most of the zymogens by their name because they begin with either pro or end with zen for example if we see pro carboxypeptidase starting with pro pro elastase other examples like uh, trypsinogen ending with gen pepsinogen ending with zen and let's see these zymogens they are activated by the proteolytic cleavage and this is one of the mechanism for enzymatic regulation many enzymes are fully active when they are spontaneously folded into three dimensional structure when they fold into three dimensional structure they automatically get activated but in contrast some enzymes are synthesized as inactive precursors and these inactive precursors are subsequently activated by cleavage of one or few specific bonds these inactive precursors are called zymogen or proenzyme let's see some of the examples which are uh, the enzymes which are activated by proteolytic cleavage enzymes or some other proteins the digestive enzymes mainly they are produced in the form of zymogens and basically in the stomach and in the pancreas the blood clotting is mediated by a cascade of proteolytic activation blood clotting as you know they contain some proteins like factor 5 6 7 8 9 which are activated only when they are needed and some protein hormones examples like uh, insulin which are synthesized in the inactive precursor form they can be activated for example uh, insulin is derived from pro insulin that means the uh, zymogen form of the insulin is pro insulin the fibrous protein collagen and which is the main uh, major constituent of uh, skin and bone is derived from pro collagen which is a soluble precursor and this pro collagen it has it is present in large amounts in the tail of tadpole by breaking this pro collagen collagen is obtained and this collagen is needed for the development of the frog and it is also broken down in mammalian uterus after delivery the conversion this conversion of pro collagenase into collagenase is done by the proteolytic cleavage another example is the procaspases procaspases these are the uh, proteins which are required for programmed cell death or apoptosis and they are synthesized in the form of inactive form called procaspases and they are activated by various signals and these caspases they function to cause cell death in most of the organisms this represents both inactive as well as active forms of the enzymes inactive forms are in the left hand side which are called as zymogens the pepsinogen inactive form is pepsinogen active form is pepsin trypsinogen is converted into trypsin chymotrypsinogen inactive form is converted into chymotrypsin active form likewise pro carboxypeptidase pro elastase are, con- are converted into carboxypeptidase and elastase which are active forms and these three are blood clotting factors plasminogen prothrombin fibrinogen they are converted into active form of ela- uh, plasmin thrombin as well as fibrin whenever 
it is necessary and you know that the insulin is the active form and the inactive form is pro insulin these are the zymogens and the right hand side these are the active forms of the enzymes which are derived from the zymogens and these you come across a question that why they are synthesized in the inactive form the synthesis of zymogens in the form of zymogens they ensure that the proteins fold properly and they make the enzyme stable during unfavorable environment and they prevent the unwanted protein digestion thereby allowing the enzyme to go to the proper place and function there so that they does not function where it is not supposed to do so thereby they have a mechanism of activation whenever they reach a particular place or environment then only they get activated next question which come across our mind is where are they where the zymogens are present zymogens are mostly found in the acinar cells and these acinar cells they are found in the pancreas as well as in the salivary glands see these are the acinar cells these all these are nothing but acinar cells and these acinar cells they are storing the inactive forms of the enzymes in the form of zymogens see the black dots here at the apex of each acinar cell these are nothing but zymogen granules zymogen granules inside the cells of uh, pancreas and salivary glands these there are proteases that can activate the digestive enzymes and these digestive enzymes they are enclosed in the zymogen granules and these zymogen granules are nothing but special holding rooms for the zymogens and these are the places in the cell that keep the zymogens safe from the proteases inside the cell inside the cell also there are many proteases but these uh, proteases they do not harm the zymogens okay let's see where the zymogen granules are stored i told you they are stored in the form of zymogen granules which are like little rooms or little bubbles and they accumulate at the apex of the acinar cells and whenever they are required they are released into the gastrointestinal tract due to a signal or a nerve impulse let's see how they are activated the zymogens can be activated by proteases which cut them cut the amino acid bonds that means the peptide bonds are broken down to release the active forms of the enzymes they can also be activated by the environment and sometimes they become autocatalytic when the bonds are cut there is a conformational change which is taking place in the enzyme enzyme structure so that they become active exposing the active site of the enzyme thereby they become functional and one of these process for the zymogen activation is autocatalysis and this is nothing but self activation when something in the environment allows the zymogens to cut its own chemical bonds then it is called as autocatalysis best example is the pepsinogen where it becomes active into the pepsin whenever the ph reaches 2 to 3 in this very high acidic conditions the pepsinogen automatically converts into pepsin the extra hydrogens which are found in the lower ph makes the molecule cut its own bonds and thereby becomes active this shows the inactive form as well as active forms pepsinogen is converted to pepsin by the high um, in very low ph and high hydrogens trypsinogen is converted into trypsin by the enterokinase likewise these are also trichomotrypsin is converted into 
chymotrypsin nogen is converted into chymotrypsin pro elastase is converted into elastase pro carboxy peptidase is converted into peptidase and plasminogen fibrinogen prothrombin blood clotting factors are converted into active forms of plasmin fibrin thrombin respectively and pro insulin is converted into insulin all these ending with gen or starting with the uh, pro starting with pro or ending with gen these are called zymogens let's sum up the inactive forms of the enzymes are called proenzymes or zymogens and atp is not required for the activation zymogen activation is irreversible the active form can never be converted into inactive form again and these zymogens they are stored inside uh, zymogen granules which are present in the acnr cells and they are activated and these uh, acnr cells or zymogen granules they release the uh, zymogens whenever they are activated by a signal or nerve impulse and one of the important process is the autocatalysis which is the common practice in some of the zymogens in the next studies we will see the activation of pepsinogen trypsinogen as well as chymotrypsinogen for more details visit the set link thanks for watching